Second Mishnah and Daphne. Page 50. Page 50. Page 50. Page 50. Page 50. Fifty-eight, not eight, eight. So letter A. Ah. Ah. Yeah, we're starting from the Mishnah. Kol shechayv and peyachayv v'maisim. Any food that's chayv and peyachayv, that means you have to leave a corner of the field for the poor, you also have to tithe it. Chayv v'maisim. However, v'yesh chayv v'maisim v'sveina chayv v'peyachayv. The opposite is not true. There are things that are chayiv and maestros, but it's still not chayiv and peya. You don't have to leave a corner of the field. It's one of the first mishnayos in Masech is peya, so it's good to. Why um, don't you leave a corner of the field? You'll see in a moment. Oh. There's certain restrictions. But you're not you do certain, all four corners. No. no. There's no. certain one. There's certain limitations on which food, which foods require this. You'll see. What's it coming to include? In other words, you're making this contrast that it could be chayev and peya. If it's chayev and peya, then it's chayev and maizu, but not necessarily the opposite. What are you coming to include? So the Gemara says, Lasi teinavir, figs and vegetables are chayev and maizu, but you don't have to leave a corner of the fig tree or the fig field, fig tree field, and you also don't have to leave a corner of the vegetable field. That these are enachai peya. The Quran, as was taught in Mishnah, Klalam Rabbi Peya, is a rule regarding peya. Let's do, let's do one word at a time over here. Anything that's food. And Vinishmar and is protected, guarded. The Gidule Menar, it's in a grows from the ground. And it's harvested in one go. Machnisilakiyam, and it's. And it's harvested, it's brought in for storage. It means you can store it. So all of those things are chayiv and peyah. Now we're going to go through what each one, the significance of each one of these things. First of all, eichel, food. This is excluding types of dyes. You don't have to leave peyah on, on herbs or uh, fruits that are not used for food, but they're only used for dyeing, for, uh, for ink, for, for color, right? Do you have pictures there of these types of things? Satan is woad. Um, oh, a highly durable indigo blue dye can be extracted from a tree. <coughs> um, and quite a sap flower. And it would make a yellow dye. Okay. Rashi asks, Sviche means what grows wild. Rashi asks, why do you need Sviche? It doesn't matter, Sviche. Even if you plant it, this is not food. It says he doesn't know. Well, you don't know my neck at Sviche, Rashi says. So maybe it says Torah faction in it. See that? Torah faction. So, and maybe what it means is that um, if you actually plant it properly, if you plant it, it would be edible. It's only the wild ones that, that are not edible. So that's just, just okay. Um, the nishmar, it needs to be guarded. That's the muti hefker. We're discussing the things that are not high in uh, If it's hefker, you don't have to leave and you acquire it from hefker. You don't have to leave a corner of your new, newly acquired from hefker field. You don't have to leave that uh, peya, that corner. The gidulim and arts, it needs to grow from the ground. The muti kameyim to exclude these types of truffles and mushrooms. Those are fun guys. But they're putter from uh, how much fun are they? <laughs> oh, uh, they're putter from Peya. <laughs> yeah, we got one. We got one. <laughs> Rabbi, what if the herbs are used for medical reasons? It's not considered food. Yeah, medical herbs, medicinal herbs are not considered food, and, and for many different uh, things. <coughs> 
so yeah, that's how it is. And it has to be gathered, collected as one um, in one go. This is excluding a fig tree that is not is not harvested in one go. So the Gemara compares the Torah to the fig tree. So it's because someone's going to wake up one morning and says, I'm going to finish the whole shas today. I'll spend a few hours, I'll do the whole thing. There's no. Like a fig tree, Today you can only get one da, one fig. Tomorrow another one will ripen. You'll be able to get that one, but you can't go out into the field and do the whole harvest because they they they, they ripen under these leaves, which the sun prote they're protected by the sun. It doesn't get like one uh, one uh, all ripen like the bananas in the truck. They all ripen at the same time. What, what was the reason? Just remind me the fig with the young woman. He compared it. The development of the fig was compared to the development of the So it's the same thing here. It's a slow development. That's why we all do this mach locus. Whether or not it's in 11, 12, 13, it's not too little. It's very nice. It's amazing. We put it one time. Very good. Double better. I'm doubled. Double down. And also you bring it in for storage. That's the Muta Yerek. That's excluding. Yerek is the green vegetables which cannot be stored. Our vegetables that could be stored. In. The grains are probably considered legumes, beans. Or, um, but, uh, but the green vegetables cannot be stored. So, Vilagabi Meiser, but regarding Meiser, Tanan, it says in the Mishnah, regarding tithing, and those are contrasting. It says, <laughs> anything that's food, protected, and it grows from the ground is chayev. Vilu is chayev and meiser and tithing. Vilu lekitasik yachad machlis alkim like tani, but it does not say for meiser that it needs to be gathered together, and it doesn't need to be also um, brought in for storage. It means meiser is chayav on extra things that pay is not chayav. Im hayu vem shumen ubetzalim, but if you had garlic and onions, then chayav. And why? Because those are vegetables that are brought in for storage. The tanan malbenis betzalim shubein a yerek. Let's say you have rows of onions that are in between other vegetables. Rabbi Yosi Amir Peir Mikalachas Rachas. Rabbi Yosi says that that divides up the field, and you have to leave a corner of each one of those rows for the poor. <laughs> that it doesn't divide the field, it's considered all one field, and you only need to leave one corner of the whole of all of those uh, rows. It's almost like on off, on off. Uh, so you only need to leave one row. Okay. So we so far we understand the Mishnah. What's going to happen now? We're going to have a Gemara. It's seemingly unrelated until we get to Daf Nanalaf. Daf Nanalaf, we're going to mention something back of that we mentioned here. We're going to get back to that. So this is just a, a digression <coughs> to another topic. Amar Rabba Barbarchana Am Rabbi Yechanan. Rabba Barbarchana says the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Ulshin. I don't know what that is, but it's a type of growth, type of uh, vegetation. Endives. Oh, okay. oh, there you go. Rashi was telling me it's Krishpala. Oh, okay. By the way, it's the same thing. Is that how you pronounce it? In the Is that the correct number no, with the with the soft G? You do it with soft Gimel with the liturgiman? Is that the? It's the Oh no, okay. Very nice. Jamel Chasidim. Okay. So endives, shazaran metchila lebehema. They're planted for animal food. Benimlach aleim la adam. But he changed his mind while they're growing, and he says, "You know what? We're going to eat these." So they were planted for one purpose. Then he changes his mind. Now, what happens is, the Gemara says the Rambam Shavala 
if you want these to be considered food, even though you just thought about them as food, but after they're harvested, you need to think about them as food again. In other words, the thoughts that you had while they were growing, do not take it away from the thoughts that you had when you planted it. Originally, you had thoughts. It's going to be animal food. Then you said, food, animal food. Then you changed your thoughts. You said, it's going to be human food. That doesn't work. Until after you, after you harvest it, then you can rethink about it for human food, it's going to be human food. What's the difference if it's human food or animal food? The difference is if it could become tame. Human food becomes tame, is susceptible to tame, and animal food isn't. It okay. Says, it says it has a pleasant taste when it's young, but it grows bigger as the plant matures. Mm, interesting. There goes our, um, our the mara, right? That was the. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Well, that's the converse. It's a real converse sneaker. Wow. 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 wow, that's cool. Now, that's cool. Yes, I hear it. Look yeah. at the real crop. Oh boy, <laughs> and you still wear this. This is your young kid's shoe. <laughs> he was just wearing it last night with us, mainly talks to the paper. It's true. Oh, I didn't know that. No. I didn't know that. Read that again. Chicory, that, again? that oh. chicory. Is a root of the endive. Do you know that? That was the root. It's one type of endive. I think of an endive. What's another word for endive? Mora. Onion. No, I don't know. No, it's like these small lettuce. I don't know what it is. You see, and I've something kind of a, it says the uh, chicory is from the family. It's one type of endive. Yeah. Because of our. Machshava, schibra, leishmei machshava. What's coming out is thoughts about food. While the food is attached to the ground, it's not considered thoughts that are going to affect the status of this growth. If it's considered human food or animal food, how can you determine and know what a person is? Yeah, so that's very interesting. Okay, that's a big, uh, big discussion. Yeah, there's a letter, there's a letter from the Rebbe. In the early years, he has four levels of thought and how significant thought is, the different aspects of halacha, where it plays out. There's four levels. We mentioned this before that the, uh, he argues with his father about how effective thought could be in the physical world. But, um, but uh, when it comes to the status of an item, let's say. <coughs> Let's say we're making these things, but we didn't paint them yet. Let's say we're making them and painting. Is it considered a finished product that it should already be able to, it's considered a keili that it should already be makabal to So our thoughts about it, is it finished, is it not finished? That's going to change if it's makabal That was that uh, Gemara with Rabbi Yechim and Rishlakish. How did Rishlakish uh, die? It was because they were arguing over a knife. If a knife needs to be polished before it's makabal and said, no, it just needs to be shot. And Rishlakish said, no, it needs to be polished. And like, when is it, when, when are your thoughts, when does a person consider it finished? So in other words, the, the thoughts of a per, the person's intention is what makes it into an item. But that was Rishlakish, the gladiator, who probably wanted to polish the gun. Yeah, that was, that's where Rishlakish responded. Oh, oh, that, was, oh, that, that was that oh, conversation. Oh, you gladiator? Yeah, the other thing, but it is, <laughs> is thought with the word kavana, or not the same level, like you just mentioned four Because Mitzvah's in the Sri Kavana. 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 Oh, so then that supports this. Now, now, um, it's not like Sabai and Rabba. We'll get to that in Brachas in about a month. So, uh, but here, what we're talking about is, is it considered food? And thought does make a difference. Interesting thing is, is that 
your thoughts made a difference clearly because your right. thoughts turned it into animal food when you planted it. Now the thoughts don't make a difference because now you're trying to get out of your original thought. That's not going to help until after you remove the, you, you harvest it. I'm a Rava. Rava says, Afana Nami Tanina, we also learned this in a Mishnah. Quote a Mishnah. Now, sometimes what the Gemara does when it says, we also learned this in the Mishnah, <coughs> as it says, you learned it one time in the Mishnah. Why are you coming along and teaching this to me? We know this from the Mishnah. And sometimes the Gemara does it the opposite. The Gemara says, oh, you're so right. We also learned this in the Mishnah. So sometimes it's a problem, sometimes it's not. It depends on how clear it is in the Mishnah. If the Mishnah is not clear at this point, then we'll say, Afana Nami Tanina, we also learned it in the Mishnah. Watch, I'm going to prove it to you. If you read the Mishnah the way I read it, it's going to come out that you're correct. So it goes like this. What's the Mishnah? It says, Yud Gimel Dvarim Namru Benevelas Oif Tar. There's 13 things that are said regarding a kosher bird that was not slaughtered. Uh, the rule by Nevelas Oif Tar is that it gives off tumma to the person's body and his clothing when he swallows it. Alma. I'm sorry, one second. I didn't say. Tzricha Machshava Ve'ena Tzricha Hefsheh. You need to think about it for food, but it doesn't need to get wet. Now, the truth is, if you're swallowing it, you don't need to think about it for food. But if you want it to give off tuma to other food as food, then it needs to be food. So you have to think about eating it. Now, why would you need to think about a bird for eating it? If it's a kosher bird, what else do you do with a kosher bird? You eat it. So we're saying, that Alma Obviously, the kosher bird that while it was alive and it was in your chicken coop or whatever, it's a kosher bird. So you thought about eating. That doesn't count. That thought. It's only after it dies that the thoughts count. You see, that thoughts while things are attached, the things while are thoughts that while things are alive don't count. Also here, thoughts of the endives while they're attached to the ground don't count. It's not considered thoughts. You have to wait till it's detached. Just like the bird, you have to wait until it's, it's, uh, it's killed, not slaughtered, because then it won't be in the vela. It has to wait till it dies for it to have those thoughts. That's the statement of Rabba. And Rab Zeira Amar, Rab Zeira says, you have no proof from there. Because this is very possible that this is a bird that fell out of some high place. And you never thought about it for food. It's the first time you saw it. It's not like it was in your chicken coop and the whole time you're planning on eating it. This just fell down from, uh, from, sun, from the sky. Absence makes the food come from fodder. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, that's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. What are you doing? Was it there before? It was fodder before. Oh, like Gene what now it's food. What are you doing? Doctor? I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know why nobody else gets trophies? Because you're all smart and you say something that's expected. Because you look at me and you say, the guy's such a dummy and an oh, idiot. Boy. Every time I say wow. something, oh, 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 give me a joke. I get toys to play with. <laughs> So, Rav Zera responds to Rav and says, you have no proof. You have no proof. Because it could be that this bird you never saw before, you never thought about it. It could be if you would have thought about it before, it would have helped the thoughts before. And you wouldn't have had to think about it afterwards, but this bird just came from the sky or whatever. Amalei Abaya, Abaya says, Rav Zera, you have a point, but you can't really hold on to that because... We have another source. Tarnagolas should be Avner Meyakulamimar. We're going to see shortly what's Tarnagolas should be Avner. But uh, Tarnagolas is a is a, 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 a rooster, a, a hen, right? Yeah. Tarnagolas is a hen. From that was in Yavna, where over there we said that you had to have thoughts about it in order for it to give off uh, tumor, to be susceptible to tumor. So, 
obviously a tonic illness is not something that comes from the sky or something that falls out. It's just they're raised. Chickens are raised. So if it's raised, then obviously you thought about it. And nevertheless, you have to think about it after it died. But that means that the, that thoughts while it's alive don't count. And it says, I mean, it well, the one did not grow by. Amalei Rebzeris says, Tanagelis Brahavi, it's the Tanagelis from outside. It's like a wild one. Amalei oh, wow. says, look at this. Achichola, they laughed at Rebzeris for saying this. Tanagelis Brahav Tamayo, the wild, the wild uh, chicken <coughs> is, is not a, even a kosher bird. Brahav Tamayo is not a tame, and does the non kosher bird give off this sort of tama? We're talking about this special tuma of that it's normally metame in the uh, base of Leah. And it went while, while you're swallowing, and we're saying that it gives off a special, uh, another type of tuma if it's the right size to, to be metame food. Here's a picture. Oh, um, I took this picture two weeks ago uh, by uh, South Florida Kosher. This is our it, it was a wild chicken, it's our family. Chicken. It's not a, a, a lady chicken and a whole bunch of little chicks, and it looked like there was two pairs. And it, looks just like, it looks just like this picture here that says it's a wild chicken. Is it a chicken or a rooster? No, a rooster, baby. <clears throat> it's yeah. got to be a um, right rooster. If it's a hen, then it makes sense why it's by South Florida kosher. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> it's from the <laughs> store next door. No. <laughs> No, those are the cats. It's a fight. It's a fight. You're coming chickens at Morgan Dudder. Yes. What if the chicken escapes from somebody else's coop? They don't know where. You don't know where to go. Where to go? Right. They go by themselves. They nobody supervises. They go eat whatever they can eat. They look at their wild chicken. Their tag. So. <laughs> Amalu Abaya. Abaya responds, we're going to be returning them. That's a difficult question. If, if they would have been tied and dropped in your yard, then you would have to hold them. And even then, I'm not sure if you have to hold on to them. I think yeah, you have to hold on to them if they would have been tied. But just but the ones that are jumping around, you have no way of uh, this of is a wild, wild So Abaya says, is... Amar A great man says something, don't laugh at him. The Tanagala Shemarda. We're not talking about the wild chicken. We're talking about a Tanagela <laughs> that is is contemporary or a little bit. Uh, he's a little bit. Uh, is the uh, time that he returned. Well, 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 was assistant. together with Rabba. Rabba and Rabzera. <laughs> this is Rabba talking. No, I'm a little Abaya. This is Abaya talking. He's slightly younger. Slightly younger. Very nice. So, now, you know, Rabba it, it was greater than Rabzera. But, uh, but this would be a student of Rabbah, so it would be like one uh, one So we're not talking about an actual wild one. We're talking about one that rebelled and left its coop. My brother, the Ibrahim Imara, that it, it went outside from the, from the master. I so therefore it's still kosher. The Pain so Come on, you guys need more coffee, you know? It's Trying to, trying to Papa, Amara, Papa says, it's possible that it was a Tanagolta Dagma. It was a Agam, it's a meadow or a marsh. Meaning swamp. Right. And it's not, it's not Tamek. What is Barbaz? It's the one that you see on this canal here. What is the Barbaz? It's a duck? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. And the Amara Papa Tanagol the Agma also Tanagol the Agma Shaya. That there's two. There's one that's a male, that's also, and there's a female that's mutter. Now we asked when we learned this in Kulin, we said how could it be that it's one's also? We said they're different species. It's not really a male. Or a female. Yeah, it's not really the match. The, one time with Rabbi Salma, he said. We don't have masora on those ducks here that they have dark kosher. We can check them. Right. Right. The simanach, if you want to remember a papa's din, it goes like this. Amayni v'lay amaynas. That the one that's not kosher is the male one. I went to the same place. Oh, boy. Give it to me. 
Darash Mareimar, Mareimar to a Tanagolta Dagma Sira. That a Tanagolta of a. Uh, of the of the marsh of the swamp is is also that's different than Rapapa says and he explained that because you were the doors of Achla because the rabbi saw that it it um, attacked and it ate that means that it was considered a wild uh, a non kosher bird and this is the bird that's called yeah, Berusa. The turkey is different. And the gold part, when the rabbi explained here, is a chicken grew up without any supervision of the owner. But the gold part that I told you is a different animal. Okay. Um, Rashi quotes Berusa. He quotes that Berusa is an unkosher bird. And this is actually what Yalta asked of Nachman. That everything that the Torah made that's not kosher also gave us a taste of it in kosher. So, so her example was the Yerusa, which is a non-kosher bird, but we have a kosher uh, um, taste of it, which is the tongue of a kavra. Of a, it must be a type of fish. Kavra. Ooh. Tongue of a type of fish that tastes like this Yerusa. Tana Rabbanon, the rabbi taught in a brisa. Goizel shenafal legas. A bird. <laughs> That fell into a wine vat, a wine press. Because a young bird. The chash of love la leisai, and you thought of removing it. Now you thought of removing it. What are you going to do with this bird? So if you're going to remove it to give it to, it died when it fell in, or maybe that's why it fell in. But if you thought of removing it to give it to a kuti that is going to eat it, then it's tame because it's considered food. A non-Jew, a kuti, would eat it. But if you thought about giving it to a dog, then it's just animal food and it's going to be tar because animal food is not considered food. Rabbi Yechonah Menuri, Rabbi Yechonah Menuri says, that even if you thought of giving it to a dog, it's still considered food. Mm-hmm. Uh, this fits good also with Pesach, which won't go away with Achilles Kelev, then it's not. Yeah, but it's not. You know, for weeks we talked about Zoom, yeah, so we yeah, had anything to say. The chicken somehow was very excited. Like, we're excited. <laughs> now, the um, Rabbi Yechonah Minuri actually holds, not because of the dog, so excited doesn't know what to do. Rabbi just holds that it doesn't require thought. He holds that it's automatically tummy even without thought. So it's not specifically a dog. He just, the, 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 the Tanakama said that if you think about it, to give it to a dog, it's going to be tar. He says even for a dog, it's going to be tar. Yeah, I'm going to determine if the person and ask them what we're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just, and we trust everybody. Yeah, well, it's the person's own item, which also. We trust we trust people with this uh, ritual. Yeah, it's hard to. You know, this is a, a very difficult piece for me to follow because I'm not knowledgeable about what's the rice and what's the rabbanon when it comes to so I don't know what we're speaking about. You, In general, this is a difficult <coughs> discussion because. We're dealing with something that really is tummy. Midaraisa. Midaraisa. It's a novella, novella sextar. It's a deraisa. The problem is that a novella sextar should not require the, the measurement that we're looking for here, or the, it should not require to be considered food because it gives off tummy <coughs> regardless of if it's considered food. If a person swallows it, then it, gives, it makes the person tummy and it makes his clothing tummy. Here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say it's tummy if you combine it with other food to make a shear of a kebeya that it's going to be susceptible to tummy to give off tummy to food. We're not talking, there's two types of tummy. There's a tummy that makes the person tummy. That's the biblical law of tummy of Nevela Sektar. Now, if it touches other food, will that other food become tummy? So that this needs to be considered food for that to happen. 
Amar Rabbi Yechanan ben Nuri. Rabbi Yechanan ben Nuri explains to the Tanakhama why he thinks that it should be tummy even without thought. He says, Kal b'chaymer. If a person swallows it, it gives off a strong tummy that makes his clothing tummy as well. And he, he, he didn't think about it, it's going to be food. If it's not food, you don't have to have any of those. So, I mean, he's swallowing it, so it's uh, probably food. But it's not the food that made a tummy. And it's not the, the thoughts that are making a tummy. It's tummy anyway. It's a the lighter sort of tummy, which just gives tummy to other food. It's a light sort of tummy. It's not making a person tummy. To make a person tummy, the tummy needs to be much stronger. To make food tummy, it could be weaker. He says, if it makes a person tummy without thought, for sure it should make food tummy without thought. That's a much, a lot, much lighter tummy. Um, they responded light. It's not so. When it comes to the strict tumah, it doesn't go down to that. The command is going to explain later what this means. We right now, we don't understand what this conversation, what the response is. But by tumah it goes down to that. We'll see in the Gemara. Amalahan, he responds, what about the Tanagoilas, the hen that was in Yavna, that it does go down to that, the Tamush Le Machshava, and they made it Tame anyway, even without thought. That means that you don't need thought. Amulai, they responded to Rabbi Yechim Manuri, Misham Raya. You bring the Raya of what happened in Yavna, that they made something Tame without thought. That's so not true. Kutim Hayusham. There were non-Jews there, but Chashvala Allah Achila, and they thought about eating it, even though it was a novella, even though it wasn't slaughtered. So over there, there actually was thought. And I says, but Mayaskin, and what are we dealing with when we say that? So Rabbi, how can somebody come and Moshev would eat something that belonged to him? How do we tell me again? <laughs> okay, I have the chicken. <coughs> And they go and come and say, ah, I want to eat the chicken. No worries. How, how can you consider it? When the no, his shabbat? thoughts aren't going to matter. It's the owner's thoughts. Okay, so, but they said there was cooking over there. In, uh, they, was so the they were thinking about their own chicken. There was no, it could be the owners were thinking of giving it to the kutin. Yes, they're mm-hmm. selling it. They're giving it. You have so a right. It's in the Gemara. It says for Amar Lahen. Oh, oh. It's not. It's not. Wow. It's the coffee I had. Take it away. Take it away. You already had the Cholin. You already had some Cholas. This is the debut. Mark, that's my bad. So you might ask, what are we dealing with over here? Ilema Bekrafim. Are we dealing with in the big cities? Then why in the big cities would you need any thought? But There's a difference between the cities and the villages. In the cities, there's a lot of people and not a lot of animals. So they eat everything that uh, has legs and wings. Um, anything is moved. Right. They'll eat anything. Unless it's an airplane or a, uh, or a table, right? <laughs> so, take the gun, leave the cannoli. Oh, no. No. <laughs> yeah. You mess it up. You mess it up. <laughs> but in oh, the villages, leave the gun, take the cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But in the villages, there's a lot of food and there's not a lot of uh, people. So in the villages, they're more picky about what they eat. And in the cities, they'll eat anything. So what that means is that in the cities, you don't need to think about things. If it's going to be food, everything is considered food. Even chalef, the fat, and the other, the velas. Um, so we said, what are we talking about over here? We're saying that you do need thought, you don't need thought. If it's in a city, so you don't need any thought. Anyway, why are we discussing if you need thought or not? Ella Bikfar must be that we're dealing in the village. And in the village, you have to think about it. Is there any opinion that says that you don't have to think about it in the villages? But none. But we have a Mishnah. It says, A carcass of a non-kosher animal. Or or the carcass of a kosher bird. No, that was in the, in the cities. That was in the cities. Yeah, go down a few lines. And it says, 
If it's in the villages, it does need thought. It doesn't need to get wet. Why? We'll explain why that in the second part in a moment. So, what, how is there an opinion over here that says it needs thought? Uh, how is there an opinion here that says it doesn't need thought? When obviously it doesn't need thought if it's in the village. Really, we're talking about it is, it's in a city. And normally, you don't need thoughts in the city to make it considered food because everything is considered food in the city. And the fact that it fell into the wine press made it disgusting, and here it spoiled it from being food and it made it like a village where maybe it does need thought or maybe it doesn't need thought. That's much like this. I'm Rabbi Yechon Ben Nuri. Rabbi Yechon Ben Nuri now says, or we're re quoting what he said, he said, Kalvachaymer. He said, it definitely does not need thought. Why? If it gives the person to him when he swallows it without thinking that there should be food, should it not make uh, other food tame without thoughts of it being food? They said no. When it comes to that serious tama, we're making the person tame, because it doesn't go down to that. So we said that the Gemara is going to explain what does it mean. My any you read is like that. What does it mean? It doesn't go down to that. Amarava hachi kamri like this is what the sages are telling Rabbi Yechon and Menuri. Loi, he's saying that no, you can't compare it to tuma chamura because im amit b'tuma chamura. When it comes to the strong tuma, which that's referring to, the person swallows a carcass of a kosher bird and makes it him tummy in his body, in his clothing tummy. That if that person would then go and touch another person, that other person is tart. But when it comes to the light, food becoming tame, you're calling it a light tama, but it's actually not a light tama. It's actually a tama that spreads from one thing to another, rabbinically. So there's a, a mix over here of what's biblical, what's rabbinic. But that's but in other words, Rabbi Yechonim Nuri was trying to say that look, the strict tuma, <coughs> Rabbi Yechonim Nuri is saying, if I don't need thought for that strict tuma, so that lighter tuma for sure shouldn't need thought. If the heavy tuma doesn't need thought, so the lighter tuma doesn't need thought. They're responding that no, that light tumma that you're talking about actually goes from one thing to another that has a stringency that that is going to tell us that just because you have you you can do that other tumma without thoughts of it becoming food but this tumma has, has has stringencies that maybe make it that you it won't go from one thing to another unless you have the thoughts and you can't compare it amalei abaya but it says kal it's a kal d'chaymer if you say to Makamura, it's like a funny uh, term, but the strict Tuma, which is more lenient. Why is it more lenient? They know it's a case, but because no one else becomes Tummy except the person himself that ate it. Metamash Leib Machshava, and nevertheless, it gives off Tuma without any thoughts. So to Makhala, the Chamira, but that light Tuma, which is more strict, because the Isaac Yetzibai, it goes from one person to another, not one person, one food to another, it spreads. In a din shemetamr shleib machshava, for sure, it should give off the tumma without machshava. In other words, it has that um, kala the chamira. It has that stringency that it goes from one to another. For sure, it should go without thought. Alam Rav Shesha Sachi Kama. So Rav Shesha says this. You have to read it like this. Like what they said was, Im Amit Betuma Chamura, if you say by the strict Tuma, Shikain Enet Sricha Hechshir, the veil of Seftar, the person swallows it, it doesn't need to get wet. And it also doesn't need to be touched by anything, by a sheriff. It's automatically coming. I remember Tuma Kala, when it comes to the light Tuma, Shit Sricha Hechshir, that it has to be. It has to be, it has to get wet. It has to be touched by, by a, uh, by a sheriff. 
as we're trying to consider this food, we're trying to consider a dead bird food that it should become tamay and it should give off tamay to other food. So we know that if you swallow it, it makes the person tamay. But what about making other food tamay? So that if it's food, then if it touches something that's that's tamay, then it will give off uh, the that the tumma that it received to something else. That's what we're saying right here. But the Gemara right away asks, Mitzvah Does it need to be prepared? Hechsher means prepared to give off tumma. But Tanan, but it was learned in it, it was taught in the Mishnah. Shlei Shedvarim Namru Benavela Seftar. By the way, that's an, another time where we're using the same word. So Normally we say Hesher for kosher and Hesher. Yeah. Well, yeah. For our yeah. list, I mean, it's different. Our we list have of, No, we have our name, our words. That means right. two different information. It's supposed to be Shlesha Asadvarm. There's 13 things that are said regarding the Nevel Seftar. And one of them is. Yeah, I want Legos. I'm tired. Okay. Well, well, Legos. <laughs> Actually, means prepared. So it means prepared. It's it's ready for something. Right. So this 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 animal was <coughs> kosher everything. No, no, we're talking about a novella bird so the that dead just bird, died. The person finds up the street, starts eating. It. Yeah. So <laughs> if, he, if we're talking about a person who's going to eat that, what does this person care? Too much power. How can he be? How can he be good to? Yeah, we don't know if he cares. The question is, is it? How can he be good to be a witness for himself? I mean, a person who doesn't because it's not necessarily no. It's not it's not necessarily a sin. Um, Oh, if it's the veil, it's a sin. Yeah. Um, If you can't trust him for that, how can you trust him for what he has in his mind? He's not gonna be like, yeah, I was thinking about uh, whatever. Is he tummy to touch once he's had the novena? That person like that is probably tummy. He's anyway. tummy and his clothing are tummy. Okay, so what if the guy had no food to eat? Shouts at the car. <coughs> the only oh, thing he yeah. could eat was the novena. Yeah, it's still, it's not that he wanted, but unfortunately, it makes him tummy. Right? It's tummy. Like this is shouts at the car. With no food bank, there's nothing. It's never a car. Then he becomes right? tummy. Then he well, becomes dumb. Right? Right? He didn't have. Uh, yeah, but he doesn't like that get the avail of feeding it. Yeah, but a person like that is probably dumb anyway because he's obviously not caring about. No, uh, I'm saying he is caring. But was not. Think of the more time you have when there was no food. Sometimes you're. But this is right? not. This you don't make halacha based on, on, on situations like that because situations like that are are yeah. you know on the other side of halacha. So yeah, speak. No, no, no. What you make the halacha, halacha based yeah. on. No, I, I, no, just the halacha covers the, all scenarios. I understand, but you can't use that as the ruling for everything. Like by Shabbos, yes, right. if someone's sick, you're allowed to do certain things. But you can't say, well, because I can do these things, so I can do these things any time. Right. right here. So it says that, Tzricha machshava ve'ena metama ela bebeis abliya ve'ena tzricha yachshay. This bread does not need to be prepared. It doesn't need to to get wet or to touch a sheretz. The Gemara says, one second. Hechsher, prepared, to become susceptible, that has different meanings. It says, Nihi the Hechsher sheretz by granted it doesn't need to touch a sheretz. But Hechsher mayim by it still needs to get wet. The Gemara says, Mayish the Hechsher sheretz by Why? What's the difference? What are you telling me that this is going to give off to other food even though it doesn't touch a sheretz? Because it itself is, has, has a strict tumma if you swallow it. We're, we're, we're making one item have two sort of tumas here, that it's going to be the tumma of swallowing and also tumma of touching other food. So we're saying, oh, it doesn't need to receive tumma from anywhere else to give tumma to other food. Kedetan, the Bey Rabbi Shmuel, it was taught in the house of Rabbi Shmuel, hech shemayim, nami loy boy, nami loy to boy. Just like you know that it doesn't need to touch a sheretz, it also, how do you know that? Because of Tanah the Bey Rabbi Shmuel, it also shouldn't need to get wet. And we have a Mishnah. That says, ain't it tricha It doesn't need to go well. We said it's, and I was trying to say it's referring to both. And Rav Sheshis was trying to say that the response of the sages was that one second, the tamakala needs hechsha. The lighter tama needs to, has that stringency. So you can't compare it to the tamachamura. It says, as it says in the house of Rabbi Shmuel, 
the Tanabe Rabbi Shmuel, it was taught in the Yeshiva of Rabbi Shmuel, Al Kol Zerah Zerasha Yezereya, and all, all seeds that are sown, that you shall sow in the ground, Masaram Shein Seifel Tamit Tamachamura, just like these seeds. That that um, do not give off a strict tumma that should make a person tummy. Food doesn't make a person tummy normally. Normally, um, uh, a carcass or sheretz, or, but not food. Food items usually don't make a person tummy. They only make other food tummy. <coughs> so if something, uh, these seeds that don't make a person tummy, so to anything that doesn't make a person tame, um requires hechsher, getting wet and touching a sheretz. Yet's an avail of safe tarsh, safe which is excludes the spirit that does make a person tame, so therefore it doesn't need to get wet. Elam Rava, rather Rava says, we came a papa, and there are those that say it's Rav Papa, because Rav and Rav Papa are a teacher student. So when they would say things, a lot of times they would be confused who said what. If it was the teacher that said it or a papa said it in the teacher's name, so it's a common theme. Some say it's a papa that said it. Shum to machamura bailam, shum to makala bailam. What that means that a tumachamura can give off tumma without thought, that it doesn't need hechsher, it doesn't need to be prepared. However, tumakala even though there is a type of tumakala that also doesn't need hechsher, which is this bird, but normally tumakala does require hechsher. And therefore, it should require thought. And that's what they're responding with. Well, since normally tumakala requires thought, so in this case also, the Vela Sektar should require thought if, a, if it's going to be considered edible or not. This was Machleka Shabiyah from Nuri. If you think about removing it from the vat, from the wine vest, to feed it to a dog, where the, where the Tanakama said that it's not considered food. And um, if you think about giving to, to the dog, and Rabbi Yechim Manuri said, doesn't, the, the thoughts about it don't matter. It's always considered uh, tummy because it's an avail of safe they, And they responded, they said, when it comes to Tumakala, it requires thought. Um, I think I should stop right here because this is uh, like sort of a new piece. Yes, Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, have a good day. Shabbos. Shabbos, thank you.